picture perfect day in McKinney, Texas, and what a way to welcome in 2021. It is the state quarterfinals, and in Class 6A Division II, the Prosper Eagles and the Demgeier Wildcats do battle today on CW33. It is great to have you with us this afternoon alongside Ladarren McLean. I'm Doug Anderson. Happy New Year, LD. Happy New Year, buddy. And what a way to uh, ring it in. We've got two outstanding ball clubs going head-to-head -to -head today for a chance to go to the state semifinals. Yeah, when you look at these two teams, no love lost between these two. These are district foes that have played earlier in the year, and it is going to be a knock-em-out, drag-out battle here this afternoon to advance one step closer to the state final. One-point win for Geyer during district play. And we'll talk about the two players that were key in that game and every game for these two ball clubs, the quarterbacks, especially for Prosper, Jackson Berry. We have grown so fond of this kid here. He's just that guy. Whatever he lacks in the physical attributes, he's just a winner. And he gets it done. He leads his team to battle week in and week out. He's the guy that you want on your team to get it done. That same warrior mentality lies within a blue chip prospect for the Geyer Wildcats, Texas a and signed Eli Stowers. This kid is dangerous. What he has physically, he has with the mental and the toughness, like you mentioned, Doug. This kid can do everything, run the ball, pass the ball. He's just a sheer warrior. Look for him to get it done here this afternoon. We look at the coaches. We look back at the first matchup, and we have kickoff coming your way. It's the state quarterfinals coming up on CW33. The holidays are full of tradition, but it's time they got a technology update from Hyundai. And thanks to the savings you'll still find during the last days of Hyundai holidays, you'll discover a new Hyundai will make your new year very merry indeed. Hurry to the final days of Hyundai holidays. Get 0% APR or lease the Sonata for $199 a month or get up to $22.50 cash back. Visit buyhyundai.com today. Who is USAA made for? It's made for this guy, a veteran who honorably served. And it's made for her. She's serving now. We made it for all branches and all ranks. Whether they served one tour or made a career of it. We also made USAA for military spouses and their kids. USAA is easy to work with and can save you money on auto, home, and renter's insurance. Become a member today. Call us for a quote. USAA. What you're made of, we're made for. Actress Gabourey Sidibe on her thriller Antebellum, plus a special exclusive, the growing division between white women and women of color. Everyone wants to have this conversation. Next, Tamron Hall, Monday morning at 9 on CW33. Take a mid-morning break from the ordinary with Morning After for a unique blend of informative and entertaining storytelling. If it matters to you, let's talk about it. So join in the conversation, the morning after. 10 a.m. weekdays on CW33. We welcome you back to McKinney ISD Stadium, the Denton Geyer marching band with the national anthem, both bands present here today. And before we have the kickoff between Geyer and Prosper, let's send it down to the field and check in with the third man on our crew, Chris Mikoski. Doug, thank you. And one reason we're so amped up to bring you this matchup today is because of how it went down when these teams faced each other in the regular season. It was October 30th at Children's Health Stadium in Prosper. Eli Stowers lined up one yard out and 
powered his way into the end zone for a one-yard touchdown to tie it at 23. Mike Mayfield added the PAT, and Geyer won 24 to 23. Geyer coach Rodney Webb and Prosper's Brandon Schmidt had similar sentiments about the rematch. There will be no surprises. There are no secrets. The Wildcats and Eagles know each other very well. This one will come down to execution, toughness, and grit, Doug. All right, thank you very much, Chris. The Wildcats won the toss. They wanted to receive the ball. So it will be Brad Larson kicking off for the Eagles. And he will kick it away to the guy. Wildcats standing back deep. Peyton Bowen is back there along with Bryson Riggs. After the kick, we will bring you the keys to the game. Larson with a short kick. Bearcats called for at the 31-yard line. So while the Wildcats get set up and head coach Rodney Webb sends his offense onto the field, let's take a look at the key to the game. For the Prosper Eagles, you've got to stall Eli Stowers. You also have to protect the ball against a bull hawking guyer defense. And the motto has been all season, keep the family together. And for the Wildcats next man up, this time of the year, you can't worry about who's not there. You gotta play, be tough. This is a gritty Prosper Eagles football team. They've gotta match that toughness and bother Barry. Jackson Barry is undisputedly the heart and soul of this Prosper team. You gotta make it tough for him today. Prosper makes it tough on Eli Stowers on the first play. And it's Aiden Ciano, that star middle linebacker for the Eagles, who comes in to deliver the sack. Well, we've seen enough of this Prosper defense, and arguably this is, again, the heart and soul of the team is number 44 on defense. This defense makes the entire team go. They feed off that toughness on that end. E.J. Phillips, handoff on second down, will pick up a couple. Third and 16 coming up for the Wildcats. And what I have not seen very many teams that have the linebacking crew that the Prosper Eagles do with Aiden Ciano, Herman Lee, and Mason Jolly. We'll call a lot of those names this afternoon. Stowers throwing deep on third down, intercepted. Picked off by Tyler Bailey. Bailey's third interception of the year in Prosper. Things couldn't go much better for their defense on that opening drive. Well, they're a plus five in the turnover margin coming into today's game, and this pass is well underthrown. If he leads and puts some air on this ball, it's a touchdown or maybe even a, just a big gain, but the pass is underthrown, and Tyler Bailey, being the athlete that he is, goes up and makes a ball-hawking play to give the ball back for the first time to his offense. So here comes Jackson Berry. And the Eagle offense which features Noah Billings in the backfield, Cameron Harpole and Tyler Berry, two of the leading receivers. And off, or rather keeper for Berry. And Berry across midfield, down at the Geyer 48-yard line, about a four-yard pickup. Uh, you kind of see on that initial play, last time we saw these guys, yeah, they kind of open up with a bunch of passing right off the back. They're going with Jackson Berry with the quarterback read option, and he keeps it just trying to set the tone, just trying to soften the middle of this uh, Geyer defense up. A very, very good defense, very balanced across their front seven, and they've got some guys on the back end. So this offense has got to be balanced, and that's the way they want to start off here today. Noah Billings is in the backfield with Berry. Barry the keeper again, this time across the 45. And about six yards, close to a first down for Jackson Barry. Uh, here's another called quarterback run. It's a little bit of a delayed quarterback draw. You've got the running back who's leading, and he's deep enough, Doug, to where he can pick his own lane. He can go right, he can go middle. He chose to go out the back door on the left side, and it was enough to get the first down. Barry out of the gun. He's got Jacob Devaney in the backfield. Now Devaney splits out. And Barry to throw. Caught at the 40. That's about all Cameron Harpole will get his first catch of the afternoon. A three-yard game. They'll spot him at the 39. Peyton Bowen 
On the stop for the Gar Wildcats. Yeah, Peyton Bowen, Bowen, a sophomore on defense, has good measurable 6'1", 180 pounds. They're going to need that size and that physicality, especially against Carmen uh, Harpool, who's 6'4", 215. Cameron, I should say. Devaney. He fights for about a yard. Before he's pushed back by that guy defense. Yeah, this is what they have to do. You see that three releasing linebacker right there? That's Carson Parham, number 11. He just scrapes across. When he sees that hole open up, it's the opposite of what a running back would do. A running back goes through the hole, as does the linebacker. When you see that hole, you fill those gaps, and Parham there does a great job of getting in the backfield there. So now third and six for the Eagles on their opening drive. An interception put them in great position field-wise. Now they try to capitalize. The ball batted down as Barry was throwing out to Tyler Bailey. Looked like Ryan Rowan Briggs got a big hand on it. Well, that's the one thing right here with Jackson Barry. He throws a flat pass, and yeah, you're right, Doug. He gets his... Big Paul up there to knock it down. Briggs reaching up and knocking it down. 6'3", 240 pound defensive end. So Grant Peck will come on to punt for the Eagles. Peyton Bowen back deep to look at it. He will watch it go out of bounds. We'll take a timeout. Both teams have had the ball once. Neither team able to do much with it. 822 remaining in the. Our new house is amazing. Great street, huge yard. There is a bit of an issue with our neighbors fencing. <laughs> At least Geico makes bundling our home and car insurance easy. Which helps us save even more. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Peter. Push it. Ah. Right. For bundling made easy, go to Geico.com. We're going to find the perfect tree. We're going skating. We're going to Nana's. Wherever you go this holiday, Chevy can help you get there. Which is why we're making our Chevy employee discount available to everyone. The Chevy price you pay is what we pay. Not a cent more. So wherever you go, Happy holidays from Chevy. Use the Chevy employee discount for everyone to get over $6,800 below MSRP on this Equinox. Get the Chevy employee discount for everyone today. Starbucks. Coming to CW33 this January, Justice comes home with a new generation of Texas Rangers. Supernatural's Jared Padalecki stars as Walker, a lawman, widower, and father with a strong moral code who returns home. Don't miss the series premiere of Walker, Thursday, January 21st, right here on CW33. All right, thank you, Chris. Doug Anderson and Ladera McLean with you along with Chris Mikoski from McKinney in the Class 6A Division II state quarterfinals. Prosper and Denton Geyer, no score. Each team has had a possession. On Geyer's opening drive, Eli Stowers was intercepted by Tyler Bailey. Handoff, Tyon Ulrich picked up a yard on first down. Second down to nine coming up, and Urban Lee with the stop for the Eagles. And these linebackers are really a problem for any team, and these running backs have got to be extra careful, and especially in passing situations, they've got to be excellent in pass protection. Stowers on the rollout, threw the ball away. There's nobody in the area for Stowers, and looked like he saw an opportunity just to kill that play because I don't think it was going anywhere. Yeah, watch the timing of this play. It looks like it just catches him by surprise and everybody's kind of a half step second slow to get that play going. Stowers rolls out again. This time eludes two Eagles, throws to the sideline. Ball is caught. Terrific catch by Demarcus Howard. There is a penalty flag on the field. Take another look at that reception. Now, although he gets his pass off, you, you just don't want your quarterback running for his life, scrambling early in the game. And it's a pretty nice looking, a good looking ball there to catch. And 
Marcus Howard. I usually when they drop that hat like that, the first guy out of bounds. The ruling on the field is a completed pass. Illegal touching. Offense. The receiver went out of bounds. It was the first come back in to touch the ball. Five yards from the previous spot. Lost a down. He's also in the fourth down. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Anytime that official you know, he throws his hat down on the ground like that. Now you can't really see it here, but watch it. He kind of loses where he is. He steps out there barely. That's a good call there by the official. A tough break for Geyer as now they have to punt the ball away for the second time. Tyler Bailey back to return the kick. Tyler Bailey back to receive as the punt takes a backwards roll into Geyer territory down at the 40-yard line. I'll correct myself. That was only the first punt for Geyer, their first drive interception from Eli Stowers. And now Prosper, who had great field position on their first drive, gets even better field position to start their second drive. Yeah, they had some success on that first drive. Uh, a lot of Jackson Berry quarterback keepers. You're, you're probably going to see them open it up here. They, they've kind of gotten a feel. They know these, this team already well enough, but sometimes you make those adjustments from game to game, and you may see this offense open it up and go a little bit more vertical, which they are prone to typically do. Pass complete to Noah Billings. Billings will pick up six. Second down and four coming up. Jade Fugit with the tackle for Geyer. You know, they just need somebody else on offense to pick up some of the slack. And Noah Billings is one of these athletes. He's one of these running backs, but also one of the starting receivers. He's versatile enough. They're going to need that X factor today. They're going to need somebody else to take the pressure off Jackson Berry, Cameron Harpool, and certainly Tyler Bailey. Somebody else needs to step up. Billings could be it. Billings takes the handoff on the end around and not much there. No game as he is stopped at the 34 yard line. Yeah, this defense is big, they're physical, and they run well. Watch all these black shirts. They recognize the play, and now they're chasing. And now they just suck, get to the edge, and they shut the corner down. It's going to be tough to really work against either one of these defenses. The defenses this time of year, Doug, for the final round, these defenses get better, and the talent level certainly rises up. These offenses have to be creative. They've got to be in sync if you want to try to move the chains today. Jacob Devaney in the backfield. Third down and four. Barry turned, and Devaney wasn't there. He'll keep it. And he was enough to pick up a first down, five oh, yards to the 29-yard wow. line. Just like they drew it up, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, man. Well, we kind of saw that last night in the Ohio State-Clemson game. The running back went the wrong way, and Trevor Lawrence did that, and he's like, uh-oh, but Jackson Berry turns this into a first down. And that's what I'm talking about, the warrior mentality. You just never feel like you're out of the play because even on a broken play, number five back there pulling the trigger can still make things happen. First down for the Eagles. Harpole goes in motion. Barry looks to throw downfield. Has an open receiver. Oh, man. oh would have been six for Cameron Harpole, but pass slightly overthrown. Uh, they had the perfect play on against the perfect defense. And they come with a little bit of an inside blitz. So they're rushing five. It should have been picked up a little bit better than that. And Jackson Barry, I know what he's thinking about. I've got to put enough on this because I'm about to get hit. But he didn't get hit, and the ball sailed out on him, and he missed a wide open receiver. That's one Jackson Berry would like to have back. Second down and 10. Yeah, you may see them come back to that formation and maybe reverse the formation, but come back to that play also later in the game. And off Devaney. Into the pile for no game, maybe a yard. Coming out of the pack, Marquand Pope, the safety. Garrett plays a three safety look, uh, and so they are very 
active those defensive backs they come up and play more of a linebacker position sometimes and then sometimes they're dropping back in pass coverage but you always have to keep your head on a swivel when a guy like Marquand Pope or Peyton Bowen is around yeah a little bit of a different look from last year they played a base 4 three defense and you're right Doug a three down lineman that extra safety helps him and certainly in passing situations Barry Harpo touchdown there is a penalty flag on the field but if this stands it's the first points of the game and they go to prosper well, that's a pretty play Let's see what this call is you just can't lose track of number nine yeah, he, he's the biggest receiver that they have and you know the receiver downfield offense number nine oh wow he was covered at the snap five yard penalty from the previous spot Somebody's third down yeah, i didn't see that one at the beginning of the snap Ricky Heron certainly on the call there. Ricky Heron's been on the call for a lot of our games. Yeah, yeah. It seems like we've seen him every other week. Well, it seems like every other week we've got the Prosper <laughs> Eagles. <laughs> and, and, and they're just a fun team to watch. And, you know, I said it last time. They, they just played the game on the field. Whatever needs to be done, they can seem to find a way to get it done. Barry, his throw is complete. Up at the 26-yard line, a pickup of about six yards. Brayden Reimer with the reception now well, that's the thing about this guy or defense you may get a little bit of, of yardage on them but they're sure tacklers and the pass is completed the receiver goes down immediately so there's no run yards after the catch and it's decision time here for coach smith fourth down and seven yeah you, you, you're just kind of in that little gray area it's a, a little far for a field goal a little too close to punt. Empty set for Barry. Throws on a slam. Harpo inside the 10. First and goal for the Prosper Eagles. Uh, this is just great football. This is a great job. The offensive coordinator, I'm a big fan of Tyler Moore. He empties the backfield. And now you've got man-to-man -man matchups, and he picks the easy inside slant throw. And Cameron Harpo is an excellent route runner. He sets it up beautifully. It gives this quarterback time and a space and a target to put it on the money. Our bowl San Diego State signing. And off is a fake. Keeper by Barry. He works inside the 10-yard line down to about the six. No much of a game there. Second down and goal coming up. Here's a heck of a play by Jordan Eubanks, number six. He's scraping over the top. And sometimes these linebackers, when they scrape, they get caught up in the wash and looking at that dive. But on the read option, you've got to be disciplined. You've got to play in sync. And that time, Eubanks did a fantastic job there. Eubanks, 40 tackles on the season. A 6-2 senior signed with Florida State. Second down and goal. Three receivers on the left side. There he tells Devaney, come to his right. Very waiting, throwing. And knocked down in the end zone. Yeah, that's miscommunication there on the receivers. You had two receivers running the same route about two yards away from each other. And they're lucky that this did get picked off. Watch these two receivers, Doug, at the top. That, that should never happen. You've got to have a little bit of separation, even if you do run the double slants. That time they got away with one, and they get picked off there. Jade Fugit knocking the ball down to bring up third and goal. Now two backs in the backfield with Barry. Billings will go in motion. Barry looks, corner of the end zone, and over the head of a guy defensive back, Darius Goodlow, incomplete. And the field goal unit will come on for the Eagles, so Geyer's defense has to feel pretty good yeah. about that last possession for Prosper because that – Probably should have been a touchdown, one that was called back because Harpole had shifted on the line. Twenty-four yard attempt for Brad Larson. And the kick is on the way in good. So the Eagles do deliver the first points of the afternoon. And with 227 left in the first quarter, it's Prosper three. Guy or nothing. 
I love Southwest Kia because they sold us a car with lane assist. And let me tell you something, it beeps at him now and I don't have to scream at him. It saved our marriage. And I love Southwest Kia for the amazing customer service. And the prices aren't shabby either. And by the way, that lane assist works when you drive too. We love Southwest Kia. America, break free from 2020. Now through January 7th, join Planet Fitness for no enrollment. $10 a month, no commitment. 2020 is over. Start 2021 with tons of ways to get moving in our clean and spacious clubs. And spread out while you work out with cardio distancing and our new crowd meter. Plus, use our app to get moving anywhere. Your fitness is essential, so kick things off with the year's best deal. Join for no enrollment, $10 a month, no commitment. Hurry, deal ends January 7th. It's the Prosper Eagles who strike first with a 24-yard field goal by Brad Larson to make the score 3-0 Prosper over Geyer. The winner will move on to the state semifinals and play the winner of the Cedar Hill-Rockwall Heath game that is taking place today. How about that? We've got some local teams in the quarterfinal round. That's uh, fantastic. That just showed you the DFW still not going anywhere and going to have something to say when it comes all down in, you know, the next few weeks here. There's the kick from Larson, another short one. This time it will be returned from the 23-yard line. Not much there for Landon Sides as he goes out of bounds around the 33. Let's send it down to the field and check in with Chris. Well, Brad Larson put up the field goal and made this game 3 to nothing in favor of Prosper. When he was an infant, he was diagnosed with cancer. He beat it and is now doing his part to help other kids going through their own battles. For the last two seasons, Brad has been using his platform to raise money to fight childhood cancer. You can go to his webpage and give a donation for every point he scored. He raised $4,000 last year, and right now, guys, he is $750 away from matching that mark this season. I say we get him there by the end of this game. Go to CW33.com slash Brad. Absolutely. Let's do it. Pass incomplete. Stowers is trying to find Jace Wilson. Wilson, a big 6-5 target LD, but the pass was too high even for him. Yeah, and really tough to overthrow him, and that just shows you the fundamentals breakdown there by your quarterback, Eli Stowers, as that shoulder tilted up to the pass sale. Handoff right up the middle. Big gainer for B.J. Phillips, 17 yards, and there's the first real bright spot for Gary this afternoon. Now Joe Radovan, 63, the center. Watch him get to the next level. He knocks his guy out of the way there. You've got big Knox Boyd, number 74. He's just looking for anybody to block. Byron Phillips, you see his numbers there. What a great run there. Phillips runs into the pile about a yard. Actually, Stowers with the keeper on that one, sorry. And uh, that's gonna bring up second down and nine. Eight, Ciano met Stowers in the middle. Now this uh, Geyer offense didn't run the, bell, the ball, I should say, particularly well with their two running backs. Eli Stowers had 11 carries for 111 yards against Abilene last week. Now they did run for 183 yards total. Tyon Aldridge with the reception, picks up a first down. Now they've got two running backs they'd like to get back there in the back of Allridge, certainly one of those guys, and we saw Phillips. Somebody else has got to take that load of running the ball in the backfield. Here's Allridge again, as a hole right up the middle, and all the way to the 25-yard line. 17-yard run for Tyon Aldridge, Allridge, so you've got back-to-back Almost 17 yard runs, one for Phillips, one for Allridge, and the Gower Wildcats are on the move. Yeah, it's all about creating those angles. A big offensive line, 274 pounds per man, and they're pulling these big bodies and creating lanes again. Phillips, this time to the 15, 10 yard gain. First down for the Wildcats, and that's definitely one of the strengths of this Gower ball club is that offensive line that features 
Gabe Blair at one tackle and Knox Boyd at the other tackle. Both of those guys are FBS signees. Blair to North Texas and Boyd to Charlotte. Here's Phillips. And Phillips will pick up three on first down, second and seven coming up. And that's the thing you got to love about Rodney Webb. Once he finds something offensively that he can hang his hat on, he's going to run it until you figure out a way to stop it. And they've run here consecutively on the right side, and they pulled Nathan Penny, and it's been gashed in his defense. They've got some momentum here to end the first quarter. Guy are on the move, and they are threatening the score for the first time today as we come to the end of the first quarter. In the kidney, Prosper leads Geyer 3 0 on CW 33. CW 33 High School Football Showdown is brought to you by Nebraska Furniture Mart. 50 days of doorbusters, great deals, even bigger savings. Here's to good friends that got us through tough times, good memories made simply by staying home, and good days celebrated in creative ways. And here's to starting 2021 with a clean slate at Nebraska Furniture Mart. Explore New Year savings store-wide on furniture, flooring, appliances, and electronics. Safely shop it all from the basics to the best with 24-month financing available and convenient delivery or contact-free pickup. Let's start the new year with a clean slate and savings from Nebraska Furniture Mart. We made USAA insurance for members like Martin, an Air Force veteran made of doing what's right, not what's easy. So when a hailstorm hit, USAA reached out before he could even inspect the damage. That's how you do it right. USAA insurance is made just the way Martin's family needs it. With hassle-free claims, he got paid before his neighbor even got started. Because doing right by our members, that's what's right. USAA, what you're made of, we're made for. Life's full of little accidents. And the Hyundai Tucson helps make sure they stay little by alerting you if you drift out of your lane and even gently correcting your steering. Because unlike your favorite shirt, you are irreplaceable. Hyundai, the longer you look, the more there is to like. Get 0% APR or lease the Tucson for $199 a month or get $32.50 cash back. Visit buyhyundai.com today. Second quarter set to begin in McKinney. Geyer trailing Prosper 3-0, but the Wildcats putting together their best drive of the afternoon, and B.J. Phillips carries it inside the 10, down to the 8-yard line, 4-yard run. Third down and three coming up. Yeah, there hasn't been many offenses this season to really bring the fight to this offense, or to this defense, I should say, but look at the really the push and the attack by this offense it's a different mentality from the first opening drives of the game doug they've really taken the fight to the line of scrimmage and really pushing back this very dominant defense of the prosper eagles stowers throws corner of the end zone it's caught no incomplete oh the ball was in the hands of the receiver chase wilson for just a moment but Caleb Miles was able to knock it away from him before it became a touchdown. All right, Caleb Miles has given up a lot of inches, isn't he? 6'5 over there, Jace Wilson. This is what you want. You just want this jump ball and watch him just go up and get it. And he couldn't hold on to it. That's a perfect pass. Terrific pass. It looked like Wilson had it, and then Miles just swiped it away from him at the last moment. Good play by Miles, the junior defensive back. Mike Mayfield with the field goal to tie things up. It's Prosper three, Geyer three with 11-17 left in the first half. Right, you see little of these offenses just trying to find something. And now you see Geyer's turn. They go down and get some points. And it's all about feeling each other out. What adjustments have you made since the last time we saw you? Everything looks different from what you watch on film and the guys last game. Now this game here, the stakes are higher. You know, the adrenaline is off the charts. What adjustments have you made today? You see the Geyer drill team. One of the reasons that McKinney ISD was chosen as the venue for this game today was the fact that the drill teams and the bands could be allowed to come yeah. and participate. And uh, 
that was a big deal for the coaches involved in this game to get all the kids yeah. involved and that's a cool thing it, it almost looks normal to me. <laughs> it, it, it really does it i mean I, I feel like we got as many fans as the rose bowl did yesterday <laughs> in the stadium because they can only have 16,000. we got to be flirting around that so line drive kick noah billings will watch him roll into the end zone he'll let it die there gar picks it up just in case the refs thought that billings might have touched it he did not so it's going to be a touchback and the Eagles will have it on the 25 yard line and while they get that set up let's send it down to the field and check in with Chris this January the drama of high school football returns with a new season of All-American senior year looks very different and the stakes of this year's football season aren't just high they are personal the season premiere of All-American Monday January 18th on CW 33 all right thanks Chris Jackson Berry leads the Eagles onto the field. Tie ball game. First down for the Eagles for the from the 25 yard line. Big handoff to Devaney right up the middle. He's got room to run. 30. Can he outrun the coverage? No. Drag down at the 19 yard line. A 56 yard run for Jacob Devaney on first down. Now watch the block in the center of the offensive line. You saw Troy Stansel, number 72, when he down blocked and Nash Gagliano, the center, it created a huge gash. Watch this here. Bam, right there up the middle, and then Devaney is on his horse. And thank goodness that you got Peyton Bowen that's got some speed to track him down. Yeah, Peyton Bowen saved a touchdown. But a huge run for Devaney. First down, they give it back to Devaney. No game there. Well, we talked about the quarterbacks. We talked about the defense. Let's talk about these offensive lines. You've got two fundamentally sound offensive lines. We saw the clinic that Geyer put on to get their first three points. Now you're seeing the return volley by this offensive line to Prosper. They're technically sound. They're big. They're physical, smart guys. And they showed you how they can get it done there. On second down, Barry looks to throw to the far sideline. It's caught. Tackle at the 10 yard line, Tyler Bailey. And it's a first down for the Eagles. It will be first and goal spotted at the nine yard line. This is just taking what the defense can give you. Tyler Bailey, one of the starting defensive backs, runs an excellent route. He pushes it up far enough and gives his quarterback space to bring him back. And then he just catches the ball and goes upfield. Now they've got a first and goal. This is where they've been awfully good here in the playoffs, certainly. This defense of the Wildcats got the work cut out for him here. Billings goes in motion. They'll hand off to Devaney, and he is met before he makes the line of scrimmage. That was Cooper Lands, the Baylor signee, who just totally blew up that play. That was just rude, wasn't it? Look at him. He gets inside of Jacob Mummy. And Jacob Mummy cannot allow anybody to cross his face. Look at this, right there. That's a no-no. And that play is dead from the time it started. And Lance is a beast on that defensive front. It seems like every week we've had a beast on the defensive line. And this guy here is no shortage of that, sir. Last week we had the Bear. Bear Alexander for Denton Ryan. <laughs> this week we've got a Baylor Bear, we Cooper Lance. Yeah. <laughs> Barry throwing to the end zone. Incomplete. Harpole was the intended receiver. Coverage by Peyton Bowen. And you got to give it up for this secondary just a little bit because Bowen has done a really good job. Darius Goodlow on the other side. But Ryan Yates, a sophomore, has stepped in for Deuce Harmon. Yeah. Harmon is a Texas A&M signing. He's injured. He's not available. But a sophomore, Ryan Yates, stepping up and taking his place. Yeah, it seems like when you lose somebody like that, and it's, and again, that next guy up mentality, right? You've got to step up. These young sophomores, Peyton Bowen, you mentioned Ryan Yates. These two guys have filled in nicely and admirably. Barry on third down, throwing for the end zone. Double coverage, and he's picked off. And that is Marquan Pope with his fourth interception of the year. 
they had the perfect defense on. I'm really shocked Jackson Berry didn't read this coverage. They're running a cover three, and so those cornerbacks are dropping to the end zone, but they also have safety help. Look at the bailout here. You've got to throw underneath. You've got to come off of that and read that middle safety, and it's a perfect read by Pope for the INT. And an interesting note about that, Jackson Berry coming into the playoffs had thrown 21 touchdowns, eight interceptions. In the playoffs, Barry, eight TDs, no interceptions yeah. until that one right there. And, and that's the reason why they've been able to survive in advance. Ulrich is the running back. He'll take the handoff, pick up a couple. Second down and eight coming up. So each team has a giveaway. We'll see how it works out for Geyer if they can capitalize on it. Stowers, well protected, will step up. Sliding to a stop at the 30-yard line. Good enough for a first down. Let's send it down to the field. We'll check in with Chris. Guys, the Geyer offensive line has just had a revolving door this season. The first time this group of five players that are on the field right now were together was against Capel. It has been consistent since that matchup with the Cowboys, but they still lack Grayson O'Bara, who was out since the first quarter of the Prosper game. Hamstring injury he just cannot get over. Should the Wildcats win today in advance, they may have him back for the state semifinals. Thank you, Chris. Hand off to Allridge, and Allridge was able to pick up about six yards, second down and four coming up for the Wildcats. Stowers looks to throw. Lost one to midfield, caught for a first down, 14 yard gain. And Marcus Howard with the reception for this, Geyer. This is where Stowers is really good because once he extends the play and eludes the rush, he keeps his eyes upfield, Doug. And how many times have we seen young quarterbacks take their eyes down? But Stowers keeps it up and finds his receiver, Demarcus Howard, dragging across. Stowers stands and delivers incomplete. Trying to find Bryson Riggs and Tyler Bailey have the coverage on the play. And if there's one knock in against Stowers, and there's not many, He's got to throw strikes on passes like that. If you start to aim the football, you will miss nine out of ten times. But if you throw strikes and try to throw a hole in your receiver, your accuracy is going to get better. That's the one thing you'd like to see him tighten up here today. Three receivers on the left. One man dropped on the right. Here's Stowers, keeper. Tries to spin away from a tackle by Aiden Ciano, and he can't do it. The Rice signee and the heartbeat of the Prosper defense, Aiden Ciano with the tackle. Yeah, it's just like Velcro. When you get in the grass of 44, it's over. That play is dead because he is not going to let you go. <laughs> and, and he's just the perfect prototypical linebacker that you'd like to have on your side. They're down in seven. Stowers feeling the pressure and throws as he goes down. Herman Lee. Penetrated the backfield and was able to bring down Stowers, and there's a penalty flag. It's attention to grounding. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, he's not outside of the pocket. Watch, he's got to go at least closer it's to those hash running. marks. Offense. Five foul, lost a down, results in a fourth down. The call from Ricky Heron, intentional grounding against Stowers, and that will bring up fourth down. And Wildcats unable to take advantage of the interception. Jackson Berry, and they will have to punt the ball away. You, you just get the feel that these defenses are going to keep them in this game <laughs> until the very last, you know, whistle in the game. And you know, Prosper's defense stepping up there, giving their offense a chance here, pinning the field position off this punt here. Jackson Pirtle with the punt. Fair catch called for by Tyler Bailey and made at the 31 yard line. And Prosper, Geyer. Tied at three. Eagle. Your mother is a special lady. And on her special day, you promised her a special celebration. But if slow upload speeds won't let your video call through oh. because you have cable, just remember, you're not a bad son. You just need better internet.
AT&T Fiber delivers a faster internet experience with 20 times faster upload speeds than cable. Get AT&T Fiber, plan starting at $35 a month for a year. Limited availability in select areas. Call 1-877-ONLY-ATT. We're going to find the perfect treat. We're going skating. We're going to Manos. Wherever you go this holiday, Chevy can help you get there. Which is why we're making our Chevy employee discount available to everyone. The Chevy price you pay is what we pay. Not a cent more. So wherever you go, happy holidays from Chevy. Use the Chevy employee discount for everyone to get over $5,200 below MSRP on this Trax. Chevy drives Texas. Find new roads. Over at Globe Life Park today, already one final from their triple header. The South Lake Carroll Dragons are into the state semifinals for the first time since 2011 with a 59-35 win over Trinity today. We well, talked about a statement right there. That is a big statement. Wow. Quinn Ewers, the Ohio State signee, went flat off today. He was 35 of 39 and six touchdown passes. He was 28-29 at halftime, right? Yep. Wow. Meanwhile, we've got a pretty good defensive battle brewing between Prosper and Geyer in the 6A Division II quarterfinals. Jackson Berry with a keeper. Picked up five. Yeah, you know, to win the state title, you, you, you better be able to play some defense, and you better be able to, to be tough. And these two teams are certainly that. These are two gritty teams, very similar in, in how they like to attack. Now, Prosper may have a little bit more explosiveness downfield, whereas Geyer likes to run the football. But hey, make no mistake about it. It's going to come down to who's the survival of the fittest out of this game here today. And off to Devaney. And Jacob Devaney with a two-yard pickup to bring up third down. And, you know, we go back to how we revisited the game from earlier this year. That matchup between Geyer and Prosper was a 24 to 23 ball game where Geyer won on a touchdown with no time left on the clock. This game could very well shape up the same way, the way it's played out so far. Uh, and, and that's sometimes the tendency when you have two teams that know each other well. And these offensive coordinators, defensive coordinators have got to be on their game just to find something to crack the code. Penalty flag. Cooper lands and jumped off sides, and the play went on anyway. I think that Prosper was expecting it to be a dead ball. Yeah, they should have blown that down a little bit early to protect the players because you just don't want the defensive guys having free runs. Offsides. Defense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. It's also the first down. You see Lance had jumped across and then the ball was snapped. They didn't blow it dead right away. Coach Rodney Webb patrolling that Geyer sideline. First year as the head coach at Geyer. As his team in the state quarterfinals. Barry throwing downfield. Beautiful pass, but to the wrong color jersey. It was almost picked up by Mark Juan Pope. Yeah, he, he's got to read that safety a little bit better. And, and I know he wants the home run, but sometimes it's the safe pass is just to check it down. Watch, that safety is looking right at him, and, and that's always a quarterback signal, hey, I've got to go somewhere else, because if that safety's looking at me, it's just a matter of time for him to make a play on the ball, and he's lucky Pope didn't pick that one off. Second down and 10. Barry will keep it. And manages nothing really there. Back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and that sprint option is designed to stretch the defense out. And when, and when the quarterback decides to cut it in off tackle, well, you just did the defense a solid because they're really kind of stretched out wide. And if you go to the perimeter, you actually have numbers and you might be able to pitch it, but Cooper Lance and company and Row Rowan Briggs, they're not going to have that inside tackle stuff by the quarterback. Barry with time to throw, delivers, it's caught. Ball comes loose. They'll call it an incomplete pass. Pass went 
to Kate Peavy House. And the coverage was there for Darius Goodlow, but look at Goodlow. I think he almost takes Peavy House's helmet off. <laughs> he almost did. And there was no call on the play. I was just about to say, that's a fantastic catch. Oh, you not sure that's the fumble? I mean, you're not sure that's a fumble because he had it well, could have extended and it just got kicked out of his hands. He could have had two things happen on that play, though. You could have had a fumble, but you also could have had a face mask yep. penalty against Goodlow. But no calls <laughs> offset. <laughs> and we have a punt coming from Grant Peck and the Prosper Eagles. Bear catch called for and made after a 33-yard kick. Peyton Bowen with the catch. And we take a timeout. 3.45 remaining in the first half still. America, break free from 2020. Now through January 7th, join Planet Fitness for no enrollment. $10 a month, no commitment. 2020 is over. Start 2021 with tons of ways to get moving in our clean and spacious clubs. And spread out while you work out with cardio distancing and our new crowd meter. Plus, use our app to get moving anywhere. Your fitness is essential, so kick things off with the year's best deal. Join for no enrollment, $10 a month, no commitment. Hurry, deal ends January 7th. At Rooms to Go, today and tomorrow are the last two days to find valuable New Year's Day bonus coupons in your newspaper or online at roomstogo.com. Good today and tomorrow only. Coupons that save you big money on great looking furniture. Now is the perfect time to shop and get extra savings with your bonus coupons. Plus, to make buying easier, finance interest free for five years. That's today and tomorrow only. Bonus coupon savings and five year interest free financing at Rooms to Go. Three minutes and 46 seconds left in the second quarter. Wildcats and Eagles tied at three. Coming up on the Southwest Kia halftime report, I'll visit with Denton ISD, Director of Athletics, Joey Florence. Also, we'll update you on scores from around the state, and we'll hear from both bands. One of the other games in progress here in Class 6A D2, guys, Katie versus Clear Falls, and really no surprise there, the Tigers are dominating. As you might expect from those Katy Tigers. Meanwhile, Eli Stowers takes off and runs to the near sideline, 11 yards and a first down. Well, you know, I was wondering when they were going to have some design called runs for the quarterback. He's arguably their best player. <laughs> and get him involved with his legs. That's his strength. B.J. Phillips with a handoff across the 45 to the 46, eight yards on the pickup there. Got a little tempo going here. You. You see a formation, you get the defense in a position where you can attack them. Al Stowers out of bounds near the 47-yard line. First down. Yeah, you catch this defense in a personnel grouping now to where they cannot substitute when you go tempo, and they see something, and they're just off and running now. And Stowers with another five to the 41-yard line. You've got a little power running formation. You've got big bodies on the offensive line. They're in tight. Now they're in a three wide receiver set. Stowers looking to throw. Ball comes loose. Penalty flag thrown. Gary to jump on the loose ball. Boy, you just cannot dance around in that pocket because these linebackers are, are seeking and destroying, and they come from all different angles. Just when you think you have a clean pocket. Holding. Offense, number 52. Celtics decline. Result of the play is a third down. I was just about to say, when you think you have a clean pocket, they're coming in from behind. Watch the, pre watch the pressure here. And now at first, the, the pass protection steps up nicely. But you cannot forget the back end coming around. And Herman Lee telling you guys, the, these guys get after it. Eight sacks coming in today for Herman Lee. Loss of 12 and third and 18. Facing Eli Stowers and the Wildcats. Toss over the middle. Second interception of the day for the Eagles. Ryan Medeiros. Bringing it back to the far right side and out of bounds near the guy 40 yard line. It's a 23 yard return for Medeiros, his second interception of the year. Uh, Stowers just not seeing the coverage. 
and both quarterbacks having some trouble against these defenses and these secondary guys are discovered in the coverage here and he thinks he has man coverage but that safety is sitting back there looking right at him and Madero's comes in right over the top and it's about five prosper eagles in the vicinity of that football no way this pass could be completed and they take it away again this defense finding ways to get interceptions and takeaways here in the playoffs to keep themselves going bill robertson the defensive coordinator for prosper let's feel pretty good about what he's seen from his unit today meanwhile jackson berry makes a handoff throws one underneath to devaney Jacob Devaney down to the 35 yard line to pick up of seven. Well, there's some of the creativity of this offense. It's a naked bootleg, kind of throwback screen to Devaney. And, and that's why you got to love Tyler Moore, the offensive coordinator, because he is not afraid to do with any and everything to move the chains. Hand off to Billings. Billings picks up the first down, three yards to the 32-yard line. Noah Billings is such an interesting player because he is so versatile. He'll line up in running back, but he'll line up in the slot. He'll go in motion across. They can use him in a variety of ways. Yeah, he didn't get used much last week. Only two receptions, seven yards, and three it's rushing attempts for 12 yards against Eaton, Eaton last week. Even though they won, they need his production to get up. There he throws one over to Bailey on that far sideline over his head and out of bounds. Second down and 10. Yeah, and sometimes in the course of a game like this, when these defenses are very good as a quarterback, you, you, you kind of understand, hey, you're going to have good moments, you're going to have bad moments, but you just got to minimize those bad moments. And when your time is there to make a play, you've got to be ready to do it. And you got to step up, you got to make that pass when you need to do it. I think both these quarterbacks certainly are warriors, but their time is going to come. they got to be patient. Barry hit as he threw the ball. Incomplete. But the rush was on. Jackson Barry just barely able to get rid of the football, but it goes incomplete. <laughs> well, I dare you to play quarterback in a game like this. Watch the relentless pursuit. I mean, he just dominates. That's Briggs. He just speed rushes Colin Beasley, the sophomore right tackle. Right to the quarterback. Third and ten. The Eagles are one of six on third down. A critical drive here because they get the ball to start the second half. Barry stepping up. Still on his feet. Throws one. Harpole, the intended receiver. There's flags everywhere because Harpole was trying to get to the ball and he was being impeded in a big way by the guy or secondary. Yeah, Jordan Eubanks just... Malden. <laughs> That's all it was. <laughs> and credit, but credit to Jackson Berry to extend the play, to even have a chance for that, to even be a pass interference. Pass interference. Defense number six. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. That was the linebacker, Eubanks, and we'll take another look. Well, watch the elusiveness in Jackson Berry. This is tough to do inside the pocket and still get back and try to just get something on it. That's a good call. Minute eight left in the first half. Eagles trying to come away with at least a three. But for them, hopefully a seven as they throw it. Ten yard line caught. Pass was completed to Noah Billings. Wow, that's just the court. Uh, excuse me, the coach getting in his ear. Jackson Berry, hey, when we have that flag route going on or the smash route, the inside runs shallow, the the outside runs the corner. Come down to the smash. That time he should have run the through the flag a little bit deeper. Hand off Devaney. Jacob Devaney diving toward the first down. I think he's about a yard shy at the eight. We got a little run right there. That'll bring up a timeout. Prosper will use a timeout with 38 seconds left in the half. Our coaches talk about this so much, LD, that that window of opportunity that's there at the last drive of the first half, the first drive of the second half, Prosper's got that chance right here to really 
build something if they can score on this possession and then take the ball to start the second half. Yeah, you, the same. You, you want to be able to protect your three, your three points here. Now you, you've got plenty of time. It's third down. You want to have your best play on to get yourself in the end zone. But if it's not there, you got to tell your quarterback, hey, do not force this in there. If it's not clear, throw this thing away. Let's kick the let's kick the ball and take a three-point lead going into halftime potential. We've already been three interceptions here in the first half, two by Geyer and one by Prosper. All right, look at this formation here. You got three receivers at the bottom. More times than not, they're going to drag all these guys across the field what they run. Barry up the middle. And he picks up a first down. It's first and goal. Tackled by Jackson Foster. Prosper will use another timeout. That's job one down there. Let's send it down to the field. Check in with Chris. Doug, with over 5,500 journalists from 110 newsrooms all across the country, News Nation brings you facts, not opinions. Waft live national news in primetime, seven nights a week. It's News Nation every night at 7 on WGN America. It's Prosper Eagle Ball Club 8 and 3 coming into the game. They went three and three in district play. They had to beat McKinney Boyd by a point just to make it into the playoffs. And here they are four rounds deep. Playoff wins over Marcus, Arlington Bowie, and last week Eaton. Well, you know, they're just built for the playoffs. They're built for the road. <laughs> it's certainly <laughs> to do that. They, you know, anytime you got a defense like that, and you got Jackson Berry and an offensive line, it's just a matter of them getting hot, and they got hot at the right time. Barry with Devaney in the backfield. Throws, corner of the end zone. Bailey was there, it's over his head. Yeah, that's what they wanted. Inside receiver running the flag route. He's running to the back pylon. It's exactly what you want. It's outside receivers just trying to rub a little bit and it's there. And the timing just off on the pass. Second down and goal, 28 seconds left in the half. There you go, emptying the backfield once again. It's Barry throws it, ball tipped and picked off. Intercepted in the end zone by Jaden Fugit off of a tip, and Geyer ends the prosper threat. And the score remains tied at three. Oh, you just got to have some good fortune to be a good defense, too. The pass is a little too hot. Good defense by Goodlow, first and foremost. And then it just turns into a tip drill. And Few gets there to pick it off. And this is the one thing you didn't want to have happen if you're Prosper, because now you just forfeited three points. And momentum is shifted back to the guy Wildcats. That was definitely a worst-case scenario for Prosper. Ball was tipped by Noah Billings. And Jaden Fugit, the Wildcat, able to dive on it to keep Prosper from adding any points. And we will go to the halftime locker room with these two teams nodded at three. Credit to the defenses. Each defense has two interceptions on two very good quarterbacks in the first half of this ball game. And as we go to break, it will be 3-3, Prosper and Geyer in the Class 6A Division II State Quarterfinals. Yeah, it's a little bit of an old school game today. You know, 3-3 at the halftime. I can probably count how many times we've even had anything like that, and especially this late in the season. But, man, these two teams evenly match, and these defenses have been outstanding. Terrific defensive performance by both teams. And what's really intriguing, LD, is I mean, there are a ton of adjustments that can be made yeah. you would think, between these two teams at halftime. So it's going to be interesting to see how they come out and change things in the second half. And a lot of it's fundam fundamentals. And they can do it. We'll see what they do in the second half. Class 6A Division Two, the state quarterfinals. Prosper and Geyer tied at three. We've got our Southwest Kia halftime report coming your way next on CW33.
CW33 High School Football Showdown is brought to you by Southwest Kia. Test drive your new Kia today. I love Southwest Kia because they sold us a car with lane assist. And let me tell you something, it beeps at him now and I don't have to scream at him. It saved our marriage. And I love Southwest Kia for the amazing customer service. And the prices aren't shabby either. And by the way, that lane assist works when you drive too. We love Southwest Kia. Hey, I've got this friend who has a friend whose friend's friend is a buyer at the dump. And she told me how they really do it. When they see a good deal, they buy it all. Sometimes it's so much it doesn't even fit in their warehouse. But a deal's a deal. They go direct to the source and cut out all unnecessary costs. Only buying the good stuff. They know that if they don't pay full price, you don't pay full price. So shop the dump and find that special piece for your home. To the dump, to the dump, to the dump, dump, dump. The holidays are a time for giving. To your friends. Your family. To your teacher. In that spirit of giving, Chevy's proud to give our employee a discount to everyone. The Chevy price you pay is what we pay. Not a cent more. Because giving and giving back is what the holidays are all about. Now through January 4th, use the Chevy employee discount for everyone to get a total value of over $8,500 on this Silverado Texas edition. Hurry, the employee discount for everyone ends January 4th. Who is USAA made for? It's made for this guy, a veteran who honorably served. And it's made for her. She's serving now. We made it for all branches and all ranks. Whether they served one tour or made a career of it, we also made USAA for military spouses and their kids. USAA is easy to work with and can save you money on auto, home, and renter's insurance. Become a member today. Call us for a quote. USAA. What you're made of, we're made for. Some places have low prices, but at Kroger, we go lower than low on food that's fresher than fresh. Get more ways to save with personalized coupons, fuel points, and great deals for prices that are even lower than the leading competitors' everyday low. Kroger, fresh for everyone. When it comes to comedy, CW33 is all business. Good for you. That's why you're the boss. At 4, have a meeting with the CEO of the Goldbergs. You can pay me in huggies and smoochies. Then at 5, budget some time for two and a half men. I appreciate you pretending I work hard. And at 5.30, get comedy that pays real dividends with mom. I like to think I could sell veal to a vegan. It's laughter that's BBB approved. <laughs> ah, yes, baby. Weekday starting at 4 on CW33. Good fun. Southwest Kia halftime report on CW33. A regional final between Prosper and Denton Geyer, and we are tied at three. A very happy and successful right now athletic director joins me as Joey Florence. He has been in that post for seven years after an amazing coaching career. And Coach Florence, just let's go back to yesterday to start off and Denton Ryan and what that win over Highland Park finally getting past the Scots, what that meant to the Ryan program. Well, it means I get to play again, you know, <laughs> next week. So uh, it's a big win for them, and uh, I'm proud of them. Uh, you know, I'm proud of these guys too, you know. But it's, uh, we've had some kids this year, and the coaches do something they've never done before in, in 2020 with the pandemic. And we're playing football in January. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and to have two schools in your district into the state semifinal round, incredibly special. Let's talk about the special relationship that you have with Rodney Webb. The chance to add somebody who is the president of the State Coaches Association to a, your program at Denton Geyer. Tell me about the process. Coach, Ga Coach Webb told us it was about finding that new challenge. Well, it, it you know, I've watched Rodney. He coached my nephews at Rockwall. I've watched him. He's won everywhere he's been. He's one of the most respected coaches in the state. And it's been real tough on him. You know, we got we hired him, and uh, we were in lockdown. You know, closed. Didn't, didn't get to see his kids. Didn't get to have spring football, off season. Uh, limited contact in the summer and the job he and his staff have done has been incredible this year and uh, we're fortunate to have him and I'm, I'm proud of him and 
Uh, he's got his hands full today, but, uh, he, you know, I, I'm betting on him. How would you say that things have changed as far as maybe the culture in this guy or program? You talked about wanting to instill that from the jump. Obviously, it was a little bit delayed, but yeah. once he was able to get going. Well, it'll take a while to put his stamp on it. You know, we didn't want to change. You know, Guyer's had a, a lot of winning success over the years, and we don't want to change that. We want to keep winning. But it doesn't matter. Anytime it's part of our profession, when you get a new head coach comes in, uh, Dave Hennigan took my place at Ryan, and he, he's, he's put his own stamp on it, and Rodney will put his own twist on it, but uh, they'll continue to win. Well, let's, I want to highlight one of the student athletes in this. There are a ton of incredible ones, but Eli Stowers yeah. may be the best of the best, not only one of the top quarterbacks in the state of Texas, heading to Texas A&M, but an academic all-state person. How incredible has it been to see him evolve over the years and become the young man he has? Well, I've watched Eli since he was a little kid in junior high and, and growing up, and I've got a tremendous amount of respect for him and his family. And it's, it's always good to see great athletes, but it's incredibly uh, satisfying for me to watch a, it's a better kid. You know, he's a great student, but he's a, he's, a, he's a good Christian young man. He's a great leader, and he's a great role model for our kids. And uh, he's going to be successful no matter where he goes, what he does. And that's a credit to his mom and dad and, and uh, his raising. And uh, I, I've just been grateful to just get the opportunity to watch him play. Well, I know you hung up your whistle, but if you were in the locker room right now with the guy or Wildcats, what would you be looking to do to get the offense rolling here in the second well, half? Well, that, that's why I'm not coaching Anymore. I, I don't want that. It, this is these are my kind of games. Three to three. That's some defense being played on both sides of the football. So you got to make sure we don't turn the ball over. And, and Coach Webb and them, they'll come in. And I would bet we see a steady ball of running the football, guy or football. I think I think we'll see a lot of that in the second half. Well, sir, we appreciate it. We really enjoy seeing your teams. We had Ryan here on CW 33 yeah. last week at Guy or this week, and potentially we could see a lot more Denton ISD football in the coming two weeks yeah, as well. Yeah, I hope so. And we thank you guys for covering us. All right, appreciate Coach it. Florence, we appreciate right. it very much. Let's head to the field, take a listen to the Prosper Eagle Band. We are in the regional final for Class 6A Division 2 Prosper and Geyer tied at three at McKinney ISD Stadium. Let's take a listen to the Prosper Eagle Band. The Prosper Eagle Band performing at McKinney ISD Stadium. The Prosper Eagles, the Denton Geyer Wildcats tied at three on CW33. More of the Southwest Kia halftime report on the way, including scores from around the state. It's the brand new chicken dance song. Get down, heat it up like a sauna. Spin around one time if you want. 
new chicken dance? New chicken sandwich. My juicy, thickest filet yet. My cluck sandwich combos. Only a Jack in the Box. We're going to find the perfect treat. We're going skating. We're going to Nanos. Wherever you go this holiday, Chevy can help you get there. Which is why we're making our Chevy employee discount available to everyone. The Chevy price you pay is what we pay. Not a cent more. So wherever you go, happy holidays from Chevy. Use the Chevy employee discount for everyone to get over $5,200 below MSRP on this Trax. Chevy drives Texas. Find new roads. Dr. Oz's 2021 prescription, control your weight. Tons of free tools all at your disposal. Daily Mail TV. Monday morning at 11 on CW33. Tonight on News Nation. Your children are feeling everything that you're feeling. The mental health impact on kids amidst the pandemic. It sometimes can be hard. How to support your children in a time of added stress. Tonight starting 8, 7 central on WGN America. Here's to good friends that got us through tough times. Good memories made simply by staying home. And good days celebrated in creative ways. And here's to starting 2021 with a clean slate at Nebraska Furniture Mart. Explore New Year savings store-wide on furniture, flooring, appliances, and electronics. Safely shop it all from the basics to the best with 24-month financing available and convenient delivery or contact-free pickup. Let's start the new year with a clean slate and savings from Nebraska Furniture Mart. Life's full of little accidents. And the Hyundai Tucson helps make sure they stay little by alerting you if you drift out of your lane and even gently correcting your steering. Because unlike your favorite shirt, you are irreplaceable. Hyundai, the longer you look, the more there is to like. Get 0% APR or lease the Tucson for $199 a month or get $32.50 cash back. Visit buyhyundai.com today. Introducing my brand new chicken. Crispy, crunchy breading on my juicy, thickest filet yet. Topped with mystery sauce and pickles on a brioche bun. My cluck sandwich combos. Only a Jack in the Box. Your news every hour in primetime is on News Nation on WGN America. News Nation had live team coverage of the Nashville bombing and investigation. This is going to be a big crime scene. And Courtney B. Vance and Dr. Robin Smith teamed up to talk minority mental health. It's time to come out of the shadows. News Nation covers your nation every night starting at 8, 7 central on WGN America. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find WGN America on your cable or satellite provider. The Southwest Kia Halftime Report continues on CW33 with Prosper and Denton Geyer tied at three at McKinney ISD Stadium. Well, we need you to head to our social media pages to help us decide the player of the game. Go to the CW33 Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram account and comment on the player of the game host. Again, we have reached round four of the Texas high school football state playoffs in class 5A and 6A. Whether you call it a regional final or a state quarterfinal, there's a little bit of debate about that. Either way, all of these teams playing this weekend entered the weekend three wins away from winning state championships. Let's take a look at the score starting in class 6A division one. Ohio State is into the college football playoffs national championship game and future Buckeye QB Quinn Ewers has reached the 6A D1 semifinals with South Lake Carroll. 59-35 victory for the Dragons. Ewers with 450 yards passing and six touchdowns. That sets up a matchup between the Dragons and the winner of Duncanville and DeSoto. The Panthers and the Eagles had their district matchup canceled. Now they meet tonight. It's the finale of a triple header at the Old Ballpark. North Shore is two wins away now from a state championship three-peat. The Mustangs are 14-0 after a 56-14 win over Ridgepoint. Steele and Westlake just getting underway. Knights and Chaps fighting for the right to face North Shore in the state semifinals. 6A Division II, the winner of our game between Geyer and Prosper gets whoever emerges from Cedar Hill and Rockwall Heath. 
Longhorns and Hawks get started at 315 at the old ballpark. The Katy Tigers dominating Cedar Falls 23 nothing at the half. So it'll likely be the Tigers against either Vandegrift or Jack C. Hayes. They are just getting started as well. On Class 5A and in Division 1, Mansfield Summit started the playoffs as the number four seed in its own district. Now they're in the state's final four in 5A D1. The first trip to the state semifinals for the Jags thanks to a 41 to 38 win over Red Oak. The Denton Ryan Raiders beat Highland Park for the first time since 2004. That streak included the Scots wins in the state semifinal round in 2016, 17, and 18. Final count last night in Arlington, 17 to seven. Next Friday night, it'll be Summit versus Ryan, seven o'clock at AT&T Stadium. The Cedar Park Timberwolves are into the state semifinals, 52, 42 winners over Manville. And it's an all Corpus Christi battle down in Region 4, Flower Buff and Veterans Memorial. Looking forward to that one. Actually, it is just underway. Vets Memorial up seven to nothing in the first quarter. 5A D2 now to round things out. Third straight year, the district rivals Wichita Falls Rider and Lubbock Cooper meet in a regional final. And the Raiders advance 21 to 13. Alito two wins away from a three-peat as state champs in the fourth quarter versus Lovejoy last night. What a wild game. Caden Anderson recovered a block punt for a touchdown and DeMarco Roberts added an 88-yard kickoff return for a score. Bearcats win it 52-48 to so it'll be Ryder versus Alito next Friday at Apogee Stadium in Denton. Crosby rallied back to beat Fort Ben Marshall 37 to 28. So Crosby next plays either Liberty Hill or Mission Pioneer. That game starts at 5 o'clock this evening. Those are your scores from the UIL Class 5A and Class 6A playoffs. We are trying to decide a Class 6A Division II state semifinal spot between Prosper and Geyer at break. It is 3-3 three three between those two ball clubs. And again, we talked about it earlier. One of the reasons that these teams chose to play here at McKinney ISD was so both sets of bands and drill teams could perform on the field. There are some stadiums, including college venues, where that is not being allowed this season. So now we listened to the Prosper Band. Let's listen in to the Den Geyer Marching Band. tied at three at halftime. You're watching the Southwest Kia Halftime Report on the CW33 High School Football Showdown. 
America, break free from 2020. Now through January 7th, join Planet Fitness for no enrollment. $10 a month, no commitment. 2020 is over. Start 2021 with tons of ways to get moving in our clean and spacious clubs. And spread out while you work out with cardio distancing and our new crowd meter. Plus, use our app to get moving anywhere. Your fitness is essential, so kick things off with the year's best deal. Join for no enrollment, $10 a month, no commitment. Hurry, deal ends January 7th. How does a chicken sandwich become a Whataburger spicy chicken sandwich? Is it by slathering it in a fiery sauce or adding some crazy hot toppings? Nah. If the chicken in the chicken sandwich wants to be spicy, it has to come from the inside. By marinating it in spices, frying it up, then cooling it off with fresh veggies, all on a new brioche bun. Good thing flavor can come from within. Good thing there's the new limited time spicy chicken sandwich at Whataburger. Available by dine-in, drive through curbside, and delivery. The moment you realize something is truly luxury is the moment you put it to use. Get exceptional offers on the Infinity QX80 during the Infinity Winter Sales Event. Finance the Infinity QX80 at 0% APR for 60 months and receive two years of complimentary scheduled maintenance. Great day on the lake. It is. Lunch is cooking. And I saved a bunch of money on my boat insurance with Geico. Are you? Fellas. Can it get any better than this? <laughs> Whoa. My old hairstyle grew back. <gasps> so did mine. What? I was an 80s kid. It only gets better when you switch and save with Geico. Next time on The Goldbergs. Oh my gosh! His dog is invisible! His name's Butterscotch. Aww. Okay, what is happening? She's not a dog person. Clearly. Sunday at 4 on CW33. Cordell Walker, Texas Ranger. He recently lost his wife. Feel the devil calling. It wasn't your fault. Wasn't it, though? You the ranger with the dead wife? What did you say? Guess you couldn't protect her, huh? Okay. She is gone. Some things don't add up. You are chasing ghosts. I can't think about anything else but her. Walker. Series premiere January 21st on CW33. The Southwest Kia Halftime Report rolls on on CW33 with Prosper and Denton Geyer tied at three. Had a short visit with head coach Rodney Webb of the Wildcats and just as he expected this is going to be a grinded out four quarter ball game but he was lamenting all of the missed opportunities for Geyer and the way they've shot themselves in the foot with turnovers and penalties. He just wants to see his team put together a nice steady mistake free drive coming out of the locker room. For the highlights of the first half, let's go back upstairs to LaDaron and Doug. All right, thanks, Chris. And certainly both coaches could say the very same thing because the penalties and turnovers were a big story in the first half. It started right off the bat with Geyer being intercepted by Prosper's Tyler Bailey to open the ball game up. Yeah, and I just felt like that was an underthrown pass by Stowers and Tyler Bailey just made a great play on it. And here, when you have your quarterback, Jackson Berry, got to recognize the coverage. That safety coming over the top, throwing into double coverage, and that seemed to be the theme of these two top-notch quarterbacks in this first half, Doug. Both of Geyer's interceptions came in the end zone, thwarting potential scoring drives for Prosper. And, you know, that's really a big part of this ball game is the fact that Prosper, even if they had just settled for field goals, they could have a 9-3 to three lead right now. And in a game like that, that's very, very huge. And you see Ryan Maderos there getting one of his picks, but getting a pick today as well. And I agree with you. The two top players that we've highlighted just seem to be a little bit off kilter. And that's just a lot of defense here. You've got a nice little tip drill going here. The coverage is outstanding. And then you've got your teammates Johnny on the spot to take the trip, tip drill away from the INT. 
Jaden Fugue with that last interception. And as we get ready for the second half, we've got a tie ball game in the Class 6A Division II Region 1 final. It's Prosper 3, Geyer 3 on CW 33. I feel like I'm the good kind of spicy. It means you got an edge. I got an yeah, edge. He's got some ump, and I got some ump. I don't know about your ump, but uh, impatience doesn't equal spicy. Mm -hmm. Sonic <laughs> Chicken Slinger. Is it a good ump or a bad ump? <laughs> Ford is the best-selling brand in North Texas. Here are seven reasons why. The number one selling Ford F-150 and Super Duty, America's 43-year leaders. The number one selling Ford Explorer and Expedition, number one in their class in brand loyalty. The number one selling Ford Transit and Transit Connect, and everyone's favorite, the number one selling Ford Mustang. That's seven reasons why Ford is the best-selling brand in North Texas. Purchase a number one selling Ford vehicle from your North Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. Millions of customers are leaving their providers and switching to Spectrum. And if you have AT&T with DirecTV, it's not hard to see why. Because while AT&T charges you extra for an internet modem, Spectrum gives it to you for free. They do? Yeah, they do. And Spectrum has the fastest download speeds with the most reliable performance. Get Spectrum Internet with speeds at 200 megabits for $44.99 a month. Call 833-970-4499. Spectrum wins on TV, too. Unlike AT&T with DirecTV Select, Spectrum has more free HD and free on demand, and sports channels are included. Wow, really? Really. Plus, get exclusive original content with Spectrum Originals. Get Spectrum TV from $44.99 a month. Call 833-970-4499. And unlike AT&T with DirecTV, Spectrum doesn't have contracts or early termination fees. We'll even buy out your current contract up to $500. Switch to America's fastest growing internet, TV, and voice provider. Get Spectrum Internet and TV from $44.99 a month each. Ask about our easy self-install options. Call 833-970-4499. Hello 2021. It's time to start the new year fresh with great looking rooms to go furniture. Whatever you need. Living rooms, bedrooms, dining rooms, or a kid's room. Rooms to go has it all. The furniture you want now at big rooms to go New Year's sale savings. We also have 60 month interest free financing and a warehouse full of new furniture ready to deliver fast. So let's go shop today and save big at the rooms to go New Year sale. Burger or grilled cheese? Grilled cheese. Burger. I want the crispy tenders and the tops. This patty. Mm. Really fresh. I'm going to try to chow this thing down before I get to the wrapper. Sonic Wacky Pack. Actress Gabourey Sidibe on her thriller Antebellum. Plus, a special exclusive, the growing division between white women and women of color. Everyone wants to have this conversation. Next, Tamron Hall. Monday morning at 9 on CW33. Take a mid-morning break from the ordinary with Morning After for a unique blend of informative and entertaining storytelling. If it matters to you, let's talk about it. So join in the conversation, The Morning After. 10 a.m. weekdays on CW33. It's a defensive battle between the Prosper Eagles and the Geyer Wildcats. From McKinney ISD Stadium this afternoon, tied up at three in LD. As you look at the numbers, uh, what we saw in the first half bears out with those statistics. Yeah, and the two turnovers apiece by both teams. And yeah, this is what you expected. Both offenses just having a hard time finding any sustained, long, consistent drives. Each one had one drive to get their three, but these defenses have been dominant. These offenses got to make that adjustment in this second half. Before the kick, let's send it down to the field. We'll check in with Chris. Well, Brandon Schmidt was echoing Ladaren's sentiment, just dominant defenses. And he says the key in the second half simply going to be which offense can execute more efficiently. It'll be a battle of attrition, as he called it, a 24-minute war in these final two quarters. And, of course, through six quarters of football this season between Prosper and Geyer, they've only been separated by one point. That's right, a 24-23 Geyer win back in October in district play. And so the rematch has been every bit as nip and tuck as that first battle was for head coach Rodney Webb of Geyer and Brandon Schmidt of Prosper. How about Rodney Webb, though? We, you know, Chris had the interview with Joey Florence about what a great get that was for the DISD to get Rodney Webb 
He's been a coach at four different locations, Royce City, Mesquite Horn, and most recently before Guy Rockwall. And he took all four of those programs to the state quarterfinals. That is impressive. Pretty impressive. It seems like we've seen him <laughs> just about at each one of those stops. Yeah, we're getting to look at it here. Man can plan out coach. He's got a great program, great kids. But he's in a dogfight here for the next 24 minutes. All taken at the 21-yard line by Fisher Nauman. And Nauman out across the 30, up to the 31 on the return. 10-yard return for Nauman, and that is where the Eagles will start the first possession of the second half. And I think if you were just being flat-out honest, while we're giving credit to the defenses in this ball game, the second half of this game is going to be decided by which quarterback steps up their game and plays better in the second half. Well, you, you've been inside my head. You're exactly <laughs> right. I, I think these quarterbacks uncharacteristically made some mistakes throwing into double coverage and it's really going to be the first one to kind of see the field first and settles in and plays their game <laughs> you take these turnovers away it's a different story they got to settle in and do their game and off jacob devaney on first down devaney pushes about five yards second down and five coming up as the tackle was made by marquan pope yeah, both these teams want to certainly get that established. And we kind of saw maybe that trend start on the first drive of the game. We saw a lot of Jackson Berry quarterback keepers. They were getting some nice five, six yard runs. We get a 5 1 there with Devin. Screen out to Devin, and he will pick up the first down. 10 yard game for Devin, the 5 10 junior. A couple of nice plays to start the drive. Well, both these offenses, and you see it now with Prosper, they have to use the entire field, go sideline to sideline, make this defense work, make them have to cover the entire field. Stephanie to the other side. Again, the play works well, pick up a four up to the 49-yard line. Well, as good as these defenses are, if you have them just playing what's in front of them, they're going, to, they're going to eat you up alive. But now you see the stretch of the offense. You see different formations. You see different looks. Devaney now being in the passing game, almost like a long handoff or a long uh, sweep play, trying to get to the perimeter of this defense. Throw it to Bailey this time. Bailey loses the football, has to dive on it back at the 39-yard line. Nine-yard loss as Bailey lost the handle on the ball. That one hurts because that play had a chance, and I think if he sticks in the tunnel here, he's got a chance to bust this one if he stays right in there. But the good knockout by Goodlow knocks that pass out or knocks the ball out, I should say. And this is what you can't do because you can't have third and long against either one of these defenses. Advantage to the to the good guy or Wildcats here. Yeah, big third and 16. Barry tracked down from behind by Cooper Lands. A penalty flag thrown at the end of the play, but Lands able to get his paws on Jackson Barry. Holding offense number 60. Penalty is declined. Resultant play is a fourth down. Uh, you just can't block him one on one. <laughs> You need to have a running back stay in and kind of chip him. That's just a speed rush. He runs out around Evan Brown, the left tackle, number 76, the senior. It was too easy. First sack of the day for the Wildcats. Now Peyton Bowen will be back on fourth down to retrieve this punt from Grant Peck. Bowen tracks it down at the 25-yard line. Out across the 30, now the 40. Bowen tiptoeing down the near sideline. Flags after the play all over the field, but a terrific return. 38 yards on the punt, 34 on the return if it stands, but I count four penalty flags out yeah. on the field. And this is the one they're trying to take out of the game. It's the blind side block. And at some point in time, you just got to pull up. During return, first and foul, illegal blindside block, return team number six. 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Geyer. You know, Doug, back in my day, you'd probably get a star in your helmet for making a block, but this right here, 
you got to take that out. You didn't see it completely there. Yeah, this is here. You just size it up, and, and that that's actually, yeah, he blocked in the back. That's <laughs> so that's the, back. the worst of the worst there. That's that's, a, that wouldn't even get your head across the shoulder or anything. Completely blindsided by Jordan Eubanks with the penalty, and that negates a huge return from Peyton Bowen. So Gower goes to work. Hand off by Stowers to Phillips, picks up three. You know, Phillips and Allridge, these guys are not going to be kind of wiggle runners. They're going to be get the ball run straight ahead, downhill. Stowers will do the same thing. He'll try to be a downhill runner that time. Able to manage a couple across the 40 to the 41. And the one thing that you also want to say about Stowers, he's got to get down. He's got to protect himself. He's already 6'4", but he's running through the offense and defensive line at 6'4". He needs to make himself about six foot and protect himself, or he's going to get blowed up. And that's kind of what hurt him in that state championship game against Westlake. He ran in there and was too tall, and it finally hurt himself, and he had to come out of that game. Third down. And off Phillips spins off a of one tackle but runs into a bevy of Eagles at the 43 yard line, and that is short of a first down. Boy, it's just nothing happen happening right here. Look at Herman Lee. He shoots that gap. He blows up the timing of the play there. He didn't even make the play, but that blow up there disrupts the blocking. And then here comes the cavalry of Eagle defenders just to make the, the cleanup there on the tap. So the Eagles force a three and out on Geyer's first possession. Tyler Bailey watch this one die at the 27-yard line, 29-yard punt. And both defenses hold as we continue to be deadlocked at three. Hey, got a great deal at Toyotathon. Got a great deal at Toyotathon. You too, huh? Got a great deal at Toyotathon. Yeah. Got a great deal. Okay. It's the final days of Toyotathon. Yes. Time for you to get a great deal. During Toyotathon, get $1,750 customer cash, or qualified lessees can lease the sophisticated 2020 Highlander L for only $309 a month. It all ends January 4th. Toyota, let's go places. We made USAA insurance for members like Martin, an Air Force veteran made of doing what's right, not what's easy. So when a hailstorm hit, USAA reached out before he could even inspect the damage. That's how you do it right. USAA insurance is made just the way Martin's family needs it. With hassle-free claims, he got paid before his neighbor even got started. Because doing right by our members, that's what's right. USAA, what you're made of, we're made for. Tied at three between Prosper and Geyer with 7.30 left in the third quarter. Prosper quarterback Jackson Berry signed his letter of intent with Southern Utah last month. As a member of the Big Sky Conference, the Thunderbirds wouldn't play in Texas except for a rare non-conference game. But realignment is rearing its head, and it may mean some shorter road trips for Jackson's family and friends. Southern Utah has been invited to the WAC. If they accept the offer, they may be joined by Stephen F. Austin, Sam Houston State, Abilene Christian, and Lamar. They all have interest from that conference as well, where Tarleton State is already a member. So Jackson could be seeing five Texas schools in conference play soon. I would give uh, the Jackson Berry family a chance to see him quite a bit as he would be coming to Texas two or three times a year anyway. Berry on that first down run picked up a yard, second down and nine. Berry in trouble. And down he goes, 15-yard line. Blaine Smith. The nose tackle. And his presence fell with a sack of Jackson Berry. Yeah, what, a, what an improved player this is. Blaine Smith, a black backup last year mostly. Now at the nose tackle position in this three down alignment, just beats the guy in front of him. And that's a good player in Nash Gagliano, the senior or junior center with the Prosper Eagles. He wins that one on one matchup to get that sack. 
Smith with his third sack of the season. Barry throws one to Harpole. Picks up seven up to the 21 yard line, maybe the 22. It's gonna be short of a first down, but Cameron Harpole, I think they're just trying to get him involved in this ball game. Let him touch it somehow, some way. Yeah, he had the one touchdown that it got called back. And other than that, he's been relatively quiet. Just no room at all against this guy or defense. So once again, Grant Peck will punt, this time standing on his own 11-yard line. Peyton Bowen right at midfield. Bowen watches this one and will run away from it as it is down at the 43-yard line. 35-yard punt for Grant Peck, and Geyer tries to break. Can you cook up the barbecue bacon burger at home? Well... Does your home have fresh chopped onions, pickles, smoked cheddar, Monterey Jack, bacon, tangy barbecue sauce, and orange and white stripes with the word Whataburger emblazoned out front? If so, then absolutely. Good thing there's the limited time barbecue bacon burger at Whataburger. Available by dine-in, drive-thru, curbside, and delivery. With Infinity Now, your test drive comes to you. So you can try one car one day. If you want it, want it better, and another the next. Because when you find the kind of luxury that fits you, you'll know. There's a new way to buy an Infinity from anywhere. That's Infinity Now. Lease the Infinity QX50 for $369 a month and receive two years of complimentary scheduled maintenance during the Infinity Winter Sales Event. Back in McKinney with the Wildcats and Eagles tied at three. Take a mid-morning break from ordinary news with a unique blend of informative storytelling and authentic dialogue. Join the conversation with Morning After, weekday mornings at 10 on CW33. All right, thank you, Chris. And uh, between Guy and Prosper, it's tied at three as the Wildcats take over. Penalty flag. That's going to be motion on the receiver down here, Jace Wilson. Ball start. Offense, number five. Five yard penalty for the previous spot. Remains first down. Well, neither one of these offenses can afford to put themselves behind the chains. They have to stay on schedule. And especially in a game like this, you see the penalty starting to add up a little bit for the guy or Wildcats. In a game like this, yards are premium. You can't put yourself in a hole like that. Stowers. Toss to Wilson downfield. He wrestles it away from the defensive back, Caleb Miles, and picks up the first down. 34 yards, biggest play of the day for the Wildcats. Now you go right back to him, that big body, 6'5", and this is just a jump ball. These 50-50 ball, you got to feel like Jace Wilson can win his fair share of those, and the pass is just enough to get it there, and he makes a play. Hand off to Ulrich. Trying to hit it on first down right after the big gainer, and they do to the 15-yard line. A first down, 13-yard run. Well, that's where they've had the most success, right in between the two guards and that center, right in the middle of this defense. Stowers throws on the slant for Wilson, incomplete. That time, Miles did a nice job of staying with Jace Wilson. It's been a good battle between yeah. those two this afternoon. You remember that Wilson had a ball in the end zone that Miles knocked out of his hands earlier in the first half. Yeah, he's given up a lot of size, but what he makes up for is just sheer tenacity and just harassing the bigger receiver. Stowers with a toss to Ulrich. And Ulrich back to the line, but no gain, 15-yard line. And third down coming up. Uh, the Prosper Eagles defense just clamps down. When you get into the red zone and that field starts to shrink, well, they use every inch of it to their advantage. They get off blocks. They run to the football. It's a good tackle there by this defense. Stowers, pump fake, now throw to Wilson. Up and got it. Jace Wilson with the first touchdown of the game. Geyer takes 
the lead, nine to three. And they just went back to the well. And this is just sheer physics. We're gonna take our bigger player against your smaller player. <laughs> and we're gonna throw a jump ball up, but this pass is actually pretty good. It's over the top, and Miles is there, but I just think he just missed time to jump. Nonetheless, it's six points now, seven here for the Geyer Wildcats. Mayfield's extra point good, and Chase Wilson with his sixth touchdown grab of the year finally breaks the tie and gives Geyer a 10 to three lead. It's just high enough to where he can just make a play on it. Watch Miles. He's playing an inside technique. You're guarding against the slant. And the pass is just high enough to where Wilson can pull that thing down. Last week, Wilson six catches for 83 yards. He had a couple of TDs against Abilene. And this one is a big one for Gyrus. It gives them the advantage. He's a basketball player, too, and his, his brother is actually a player at the University of Kansas, big time basketball player, so he's got that jump ball ability to be sure. Uh, you, you talk about a quarterback that just needed something, and you found a little bit of it on that drive there. Stowers not on his A game today. He showed you a little bit of some of that magic that they needed to have there to take this lead here. Kick will go out of bounds. So Prosper will have the option of a re-kick or taking the ball at the 30-yard line. Re-kick out of bounds, kicking team. Ball will be placed at the 30-yard line. First down, Prosper. So now it's Prosper's turn to answer as the first touchdown has been delivered in today's ball game, Geyer with a pass from Eli Stowers to Jace Wilson. Uh, if you're Coach Smith, you got to tell your guys, hey, let's not press. Uh, seven points, touchdown. <laughs> a game like this is huge, right? But we, we, we got to get back to execution. We've got to be able to block the guy in front of us. And our quarterback, we just need you to make the right decision. Do don't You don't have to force it. Let's chip away. Let's see if we can get what we can get here on this drive. Hand off to Jacob Devaney. No gain there to the 30-yard line. And there's that man again, Cooper Lands, who has just been a thorn in the side of the Prosper offense all afternoon. Yeah, you talked about Barry Alexander for Ryan last week, who was a huge problem for the Lobos of Longview. This guy here is a problem for Prosper's offensive line. They just don't have a matchup right now as it stands to keep him in control. And off to Billings, and Noah Billings can only manage a yard. Skyer defense feeling it right now. Dotun Olin Beckin with the tackle on the play. Now you just feel this Prosper offense really conservative, back-to-back -back dive plays right in the heart of the defense. And there's big number 42. But these guys are so good of getting their hands extending away from the offensive lineman, reading the play, and getting off the blocks and making that play in the backfield. Third and nine. Barry protected. Nowhere to throw. And lands. Third sack of the day for the Wildcats. Cooper lands. Lands on Jackson Barry. He had plenty of time, but. There was nowhere to go downfield, and that was too much for Cooper Lands. He just had a bead on Barry and took him right down. Yeah, that internal clock has to go off. If you can take a look at the back end, he doesn't have anywhere to get rid of the ball. They didn't even have a check down. And they've got an extra guy in there to block. They've got two to block Cooper Lands, and even that is not even enough as he gets his sack again <laughs> on Jackson Barry. Fair catch made by Bowen, a 31-yard punt. And now Geyer with a lot of momentum, LD. They've got a chance to really make a statement here if they can go down and score the way they did on their last possession. You almost have to feel two scores in a game with these defenses is very, very difficult. It was already difficult at a tie score. Now that Geyer's got a seven-point cushion. They got to feel a little bit of wind in their sails now, and a quarterback that should have a little bit of confidence. 
We'll see how tough this Prosper defense is against this type of adversity now. Stowers will hand off on first down. A three-yard run as Phillips takes the first carry of the drive. Second down and seven coming. Stowers, the keeper. And he will pick up four. Guyer coming in with a season at rush for 276 rushing yards per game. That's their calling card. That's what they lean on, even with their quarterback. But that's a pretty good defensive stand oh, there. By the is it? Wow. Third and two, and Stowers tried to just pick up that first down, but Herman Lee had other ideas. Yeah, he just runs into that offensive line just too high. And Herman Lee is, is going to maintain his leverage and gobble this up. Look at the penetration here. You see Siano, he's the first guy inside, and here comes Herman Lee. He gobbled that up nicely. Talked a lot about that linebacking unit for Prosper. They are so good, and they play so well together. Uh, Aiden Siano is the quarterback of that defensive unit, number 44, but Herman Lee and Mason Jolly, those two guys are right there with him. And uh, step for step, they just seem to be able to make the play. Well, you, that's exactly right. To be as solid of a defense as they are, you, know, you got to have that, that that boss in the middle, which is Siano. But these guys feed off of one another. They're so versatile because all of them can play inside or outside, and they run to the ball. But to play linebacker, you know, I've got a lot of good friends that are good ones, and it's instincts, and that's all that these guys do. They they're they're smart, they're prepared. But the instincts kick, kick in, and they can, they can make a play on that. Sky Wildcat offense came into the day averaging 43 points a game, 474 yards a game. But they have been slow to get on track this afternoon. That last drive ended in a touchdown. We'll see if they can keep that momentum going on fourth and two. Now that was a huge touchdown in the third quarter. They've been outscored, this, or excuse me, outscoring teams this year, 129 to 52 in the third quarter. So that's where they usually kind of separate themselves. So that was a huge touchdown there. Big down the distance here. Whistles before the run. They were going with Phillips. Trying to pick up that two yards on fourth down, but we'll see what the call is. I think they just got bailed out by the whistle. But Siano had read that one. Uh, there must have been an official discrepancy because that was wow. not a penalty. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So Brandon Schmidt over on that Prosper sideline has to be a little befuddled by that one because his team had it red on fourth and two. Now Gary gets another chance. He'll go with Phillips again, and it doesn't matter. Not even close. Aiden Ciano does it again. Yeah, I don't know about the decision there. You, you, you make that decision at midfield, and this defense is, is relentless. And now you've given a little bit of momentum back to Prosper. They're going to feed off their defense, but it was dug. There was really no need for that. You're up seven. Punt this ball away. Your defense has played lights out the entire game, but you're just giving a little bit of hope right now back to this Prosper offense. He's going to have the ball right at midfield. Aiden Siano with over 110 tackles on the year, 25 for loss. That guy just made another huge play. Now Prosper will try to take advantage. Tyler Bailey coming around, and he pushes it into Geyer territory. Picks up seven yards on the run. Well, their success is on the perimeter, and that has to be the attack mode now. You, you can't make a living in between the two tackles right now. You've got to stretch this defense out. Make them go get you. Make them run. And these passes have got to come out of Jackson Berry's hand. He can't stand back there and read a newspaper. Berry, quick toss to Harpole. Cameron Harpole to the 40-yard line, picks up seven in the first down. Well, that's a staple of the offense. They have Harpole kind of hooking up over the middle. 
And then they have Devaney flaring out to the flats. It's an old Florida State play they used to run years and years ago. And it puts that linebacker in a predicament, and the quarterback read it perfectly there. Under 30 seconds in the third quarter. Jackson Berry takes off. And Berry to the 35-yard line. A five-yard gain for number five as the first quarter will most likely a third quarter.